My name is Jeff Martel. And what are you doing here, Jeff? I've come to Australia to outfit a uh, full-size cedar with a uh, direct drive ultra-high pressure pump powered by a diesel engine. The, uh, the water is, is pumped through several delivery systems up to a main manifold system which delivers the water to the individual cutting heads. There's two manifolds per wing on this unit. Uh, it's done so we can isolate specific nozzles in specific areas to run different trials. The uh, water goes through the tubing to a um, water jet cutting nozzle which has got a jeweled orifice, a sapphire orifice in it, somewhere between 6 and 10 thou. What are your thoughts after doing insulation for a couple of days? It's actually gone really smoothly. It looks really good and it looks like it belongs on the machine. Regard things like you know coning and threading of the tube, um, do you think it's uh, within the capacity of farmers to undertake the technical side of this app installation? If you do damage anything, yeah, you'd be able to manage it all yourself for sure. There is many challenges bringing a transformational technology to the market, albeit the water jet technology is effectively off the shelf. Employing it into conservation agricultural systems still comes with its own difficulties. We're trying to really address limitations in knife point and in disc seeding systems. Having built this machine now, I do think it uh, provides benefits that simply at times you just can't get out of mechanical devices. And uh, what was your impression today of actually putting seed in the ground with the water jet? Um, great, we, we came out here with the intention to give it a good test out. Um, it's uh, been a dewy morning with no wind so our stubble is quite damp and, and ropey. Um, where the water jet cutter was engaged, it certainly um, cut through that straw and allowed the disc to penetrate into the soil properly. it's off the um, a lot of the seed is on top of the stubble it just we haven't been able to get it into the into the dirt um, but where we've been able to cut through the stubble which it seems to be doing nicely um, it's uh, certainly engaged that seed right right into the um, the furrow we've been troubleshooting a fair bit over the last few weeks yep. but uh, what's your impression about the path forward from here um, for water jet and ag and being durable enough to work um, I, I think we've uh, sort of half proven it that it should be pretty durable it's just about getting the right mounts in place to hold the um, where they where they connect um, there's, there's certainly it's done a couple of hundred hectares now where they've all held together with with our makeshift uh, connections uh, brackets we've made so um, yeah I think uh, it, it should be uh, very possible and Aquatil technology has the capacity to cut through crop residue however we must also consider the cost and logistics of deployment to do this, we've built an operational and economic model based on parameters including the row spacing, the ground speed, the nozzle size, the cost of fuel, and other various parameters. In terms of the different uh, water jets, are you thinking that there's uh, viable mechanisms within the range that would suit your operation in terms of cost and logistics? I think so, yes. I mean, particularly if you can use it as a liquid delivery system as well with uh, nutrients within that stream um, it makes a lot of sense all of a sudden that that cost is not just for cutting straw it's this afternoon i'm in a paddock where we have used the aquatool technology uh, doing multiple rows to see what the effect is in trying to seed into wet stubble condition um, the day we sowed here um, the stubble was really too wet and normally the farmer wouldn't have sown on that day we put these five stakes in the ground on the uh, on the five rows um, with the aquatool technology and then these, uh, these rows over here are with the disc only. Looking at the areas that were sown without the liquid coulter, again, we see the same things as before, where we have significant amounts of, uh, of hair pinning. You can see that, that all that straw there has just been pinned into the ground. Um, and, uh, and over here, you know, we've got more beans on the surface and so forth. When we look at the uh, on the rows with the Aquatool technology, um, we see uh, significantly better emergence. That's not to say it's uh, completely ideal or anything like that, but it's certainly a, uh, a lot different to the, uh, the rows without the Aquatool technology. There's still work to be done to optimise the technology and test its durability in the field. However, it's now at a point where machinery manufacturers, researchers and those that would like to build retrofit kits for existing seeders can get involved. To that end, I would like to thank everyone that's contributed to helping us develop the technology to this point, especially those with a shared vision for building the ultimate seeding machine.